Welcome to Frank Stajano Explains and to the formal languages part of the Discrete Mathematics course at the University of Cambridge. In today's video we explain the more challenging second half of Kleine's theorem, proving that for every finite automaton there is a corresponding regular expression. As we did in the first half, we are going to provide a constructive proof, showing you exactly how to build the regular expression given the automaton. This proof is really ingenious, and when you are able to replicate it and explain it to a friend without reading it out, you get a strong feeling of satisfaction and accomplishment. If you like this kind of stuff, please do click the like button on this and on all the other videos you enjoyed, and one of the side effects of your doing that is going to be that YouTube will recommend them to other people who might also enjoy them. Second half of uh, Kleine's theorem. We've, we've gone from um, regular expression to DFA, actually to NFA, but then we know how to build the DFA from NFA. Uh, and now we want to do the reverse. Every regular language, uh, which means um, every uh, finite state machine, uh, corresponds to a regular expression in the sense that it recognizes the same language as that uh, which the regular expression matches. So how can I convert a um, finite automaton into a regular expression? This is a picture of one that we have used in a past lecture, where, if you recall, I was able to do a sequence of A's and B's. I would stay in this region if I had fewer than three consecutive A's. If I had three consecutive A's, I would move here. And then I could have any other sequence of A's and B's as I liked. And so we convinced ourselves that this machine corresponded to the regular expression A, B star, three consecutive A's, A, B star. Uh, this was maybe slightly easier to see in the NFA version, where I had the same pattern here at the start, and then three A's. But I could not do that in the DFA, because from that initial state, the A would have to do only one thing. So either it looped here or it went there. And I could not do both unless I had an NFA. So if I have a DFA, I have to resort to writing it like this. But although this is maybe obvious in retrospect, uh, things are not always obvious. And here's an example to just catch you out. Uh, there's a very simple machine, uh, A, B, uh, A, is this an NFA or a DFA? Hands up who thinks it's a DFA. OK, hands up who thinks it's an NFA. Hands up who hasn't raised their hands. <laughs> OK, so um, for an well, everything that is a DFA is also an NFA. So um, you could say that those who raise their hands as uh, NFA will win on, in any case, even if it was a DFA. But we actually meant strictly a DFA and not an NFA. Uh, and um, I mean, an NFA that could not also be considered a DFA. But the point is that uh, for this machine to be a DFA, for every transition and every, for every combination of state and symbol, there must be a unique transition. And this is not the case um, if I look at this state and I say, what happens if I get a B? Well, I see only one outgoing arrow with an A, and nothing says what happens with a B. So this is not a DFA. It's not a DFA because there's a missing transition for B out of this state, which so long as it went to any of the other states, it would be a DFA. But uh, that, that absence makes it not a DFA. Anyway. This NFA, uh, what regular expression does it correspond to? And here are some guess. Uh, there's an A star. You could be here, or you could be doing A star B, and as many A B stars as you like, and then A. Oh, but if you do that, if you do A Bs, then you end up here. Then you have A A, and then A star here. That looks kind of logical. But if you try it with B, A, A, 
BAA, then we have BAA, BAA, it's accepted, and uh, BAA, I, I take this zero time, well, I don't care, I take this zero times B, uh, BAA, well, if I take BAB, that's not that. If I, take, if I don't take this a BAA, I can't take the next B. So I can see that this satisfies my machine, but I have no way of making it match this regexp. So, uh, so clearly, this is not equivalent to this, although it looked like that at first sight. And here's a counterexample why it doesn't work. So, uh, just looking at things and going through and say, oh, this must be a star, this must be another star because it's a loop, uh, is not a reliable way of building your regular expression. We need a more systematic way that works all the time, plus a proof that it is correct. So we are going to do that with the help of a mini-theorem. So the second half of Kleine's theorem is helped by another mini-theorem, a lemma, uh, which is actually pretty powerful, is even more powerful than we strictly need for proving the second half of Kleine's theorem. And this lemma, what does this lemma say? Is that um, given any NFA defined by states, alphabet transitions, uh, star state, and uh, accepting states, for any subset of the states of this NFA, and uh, for any pair of states, I might imagine uh, Q and Q prime, then I can always find, I mean, there is, and I will tell you how to write, a regular expression R parameterized in the subset and the start and ending state that satisfies the property that uh, you can go from Q to Q prime with a sequence of transitions such that all the states you visit in the intermediate transitions are in this set S. So this is a bit long-winded and complicated, but it's not actually that hard. Uh, it means you have all your states in your machine And this says, pick any two states, Q and Q prime. So it's going to be Q and Q prime. Pick any subset of the states. For example, this subset here. OK? There exists a path uh, that goes from Q to Q prime with all the intermediate states in this um, amoeba S. So for example, you can go from here to here, then from here to here, then from here to here, from here to here, and from here to here. All the intermediate states are in S. And we can make a regular expression that once you've given us these three things, finds all, uh, all the strings corresponding to those uh, sequences, which uh, can be an infinite set because you can have loops in there and keep going round, 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 until you decide that you've had enough and you go back to Q prime. So this looks like a pretty powerful thing to have because if you have a method for building this regular expression for any pair of states and subset S, then you can go back to what you needed to do uh, for Kleine's part two, which was uh, find uh, the uh, regular expression for any um, corresponding to any automaton. And what you would do is you would start from the starting state of the automaton and say, how many accepting states does the automaton have? So the automaton has a bunch of states. One of them is going to be the starting state. Some of them are going to be the accepting states. And so what I say is let's build, let's call this one um, Q1, Q2, Q3, 
3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So I would say, let's go, uh, give me the regular expression R, and the set, I'll take everything. So you can go anywhere you like, I don't care, uh, from Q1 to Q4. That will give me all the paths that get accepted by finishing in Q4. Start from the start state and, and, and there. But also, give me the other regular expression that uh, has the state starting in Q1 and finishing in Q5 with any intermediate states anywhere you like. So I'm not putting any restrictions there. And the same for Q9. And then my regular expression that uh, corresponds to the strings matched by the machine is simply uh, the um, union of all these uh, regular expressions over here. So R sought by the theorem is this. And however many accepting states I have, I just build one of these uh, R's here, always with Q here, and always with the starting state here. And this one will, will, will span over all the accepting states. And in the case the F is the empty set, if this F is the empty set, then I just don't bother and I just make R the empty regular expression. So that's, uh, if this, if I have this lemma available, then proving uh, Kleinitz part two is very easy. But now uh, my job is to prove this wonderful theorem. And this is somewhat more involved than drawing all the machines for the first half, but it's actually uh, quite ingenious. It's, uh, it's, it's rather satisfying. What you do is you say, let's work. You see that this, this um, maybe I should just get rid of all the scribbles I did. I'll do the scribbles. Um, this theorem is very powerful, this lemma is very powerful, because it lets you choose the subset of states that get visited in between. But I don't use any of that power. I always call this with a big Q uh, when I use it for proving the Kleinist theorem. If I go into this lemma and exploit its full power, I will just work by induction on the size of s. I start with a small s and I say, if I can do it for s containing a certain number of elements, then I can do it if I add another element as well. So if s is empty, what does it mean for s to be empty in here? It means I will need the paths that go from q to q prime without visiting any intermediate states. So because S is empty, there's nothing else you do in here. So this means that this is just a direct arrow. So it can only be of the shape this for some symbol A in the alphabet sigma. And uh, so if there are transitions between Q and Q prime, then I take all these transitions and uh, the symbols that label them uh, these are the regular expressions that, um, that I'm looking for. So uh, if, for example, uh, my alphabet is A, B, C, and there's a bunch of states, and between this state and this state, A and B take me there, and C takes me there, then I simply say for this, the regular expression is A or B or any others that might be uh, taking me directly from Q to Q prime. If Q and Q prime are the same state, because that's also allowed, if uh, in another instance of this problem, this is Q and it's also Q prime, then I'm going to have a situation where I have this A and B, assuming that there's 
a, b here. Uh, I can take a, b and whatever else is there going from q to q prime, and also the empty string, because it's also OK just to stay where I am, because I am already in the state that I needed to be in. So to go from q to itself without visiting any other states, the empty string is enough. And so I've easily dealt with uh, the case of um, S being the empty set. Uh, except I uh, forgot to say there could be a situation where I don't go. So this is Q and this is Q prime and I have a, B, C, A, and so on. There's actually no transition that takes me in one go from Q to Q prime. And so in that case, uh, I might also have to have uh, the empty regular expression to represent that situation. So that's when S is empty. When S is not empty, things become fun. When S is not empty, but by inductive hypothesis, I can do it for S of a certain size. And I want to prove that I can do it for S uh, with one more element. Then uh, what I do is the following. Let's take S as the one with one more element. And I can do all the sets of up to N elements then identify any element in the larger S. And the set that remains, if you take Q, the, the Q0, the one you chose, out of S, is going to be of size N. So you are going to split the paths into uh, the following way. So if you have a path that goes from uh, Q to Q prime, you could say, well, the path could go from Q to Q prime without ever visiting Q0. So all the things in between here are in S without Q0. Otherwise, it could go to Q0 and go to Q, but it could go to Q0 without visiting Q0, because it is always free to keep visiting Q0 as many times as it likes in here, with all these things being in S without Q0, and all these things being in S without Q0. So to go from Q to Q prime, either I don't go through Q0, or I go through Q0. And if I go through Q0, I can split the path of going from Q to Q prime through Q0 into uh, a number of segments that are broken up by the visits to Q0. So if I write this in a different way, my path from Q to Q prime may visit Q0, may visit Q0 again, may visit Q0 again. And this may happen. This thing here may happen zero or more times. But in between those, I'm not visiting Q0, because I'm listing explicitly all the times I'm visiting Q0. So these things are outside Q0. 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 So all these paths can be obtained by visiting only intermediate states in the set S without Q0. So this top one is go straight from Q to Q prime without going through Q0. This one is 
go from Q to Q0 without going through Q0, because I'm listing explicitly all the Q0 in this picture. This one is go from Q0 to Q0 without vis visiting Q0, as this one. And I can have several times several things that match this intermediate regular expression. And then I can go from Q0 to Q prime. Now, the interesting thing is that any possible path from Q to Q prime within the whole set S is now expressed by this regular expression that says either I go this way or I go this way, then zero or more times looping onto Q0 and then uh, back to Q4. So the zero, zero or more times corresponds to having one instance of the Q0 uh, and I only have one instance of this and one instance of that. And if I have, if I have zero, zero visits to Q0 altogether, then it's the upper path over there. So I've now given a recipe for a regular expression R that does visit uh, only states in S, which is one more than the ones I could do inductively. And so I've now uh, covered everything, and I can go all the way up to Q, and I can use it back in Kleiner's theorem. So uh, this, um, the equivalence between the machine and the regular expression is now uh, bidirectional because um, every string that matches this regular expression here uh, has the property that there is a path from Q to Q prime uh, with all the intermediate states in S. And every path that goes from Q to Q prime with every state in S for the reasoning we just had uh, matches this regular expression. So uh, this has now given us um, everything we need to complete that theorem. If we look at a practical example, we will see that even in this absolutely minimal example of a state machine as small as we can reasonably make it, um, if you just follow the algorithm as if you were a computer program, it took me all morning yesterday to actually get to the end. You can take some shortcuts if you don't get yourself mixed up, uh, but it is a, a fairly um, slow and tedious process. But it's worth doing at least once in order that you become familiar with uh, the way to apply the theory we just uh, developed. So if I want to find the regular expression that is equivalent to this machine, which we failed to do by inspection, in a previous slide, then if I'm going to use Kleiner's theorem, then I want to write a regular expression R that goes from the start state to every accepting state. And I'm lucky I only have one. So I only have to do one instead of the uh, union of several. From 0 to 0, within, with intermediate states in the set 0, 1, 2. And this is going to be equivalent by the theorem to uh, doing the same things um, in a set where I've removed one of the elements and going through that element uh, separately. Now, I have a choice as to which element I choose. And the suggestion that we have in the second slide, in the slide after this one, is to remove one because this is one that disconnects the automaton more than others. Uh, if you choose another one, you may take longer, and certainly you will not have the same intermediate results. So we'll just follow the um, procedure in the next slide, but you should be able to do it by removing any, um, any choice of element from here. Yesterday I did it with two, uh, but now we're going to do it with one. So this is going to be equal to going from zero to zero with just uh, 0 and 2 as intermediate states, or three things all going only between 0 and 2, and 
I'm going to visit this element that I removed separately. So I'm going to go from 0 to 1, from 1 to 1, and then from 1 back to my destination, 0. So here, I need to now build those various uh, regular expressions that compose this. You can see this as a, um, similar to the memoization that we saw in the uh, algorithms course, where you compute the intermediate results, you write them down somewhere so that if you are asked to do the same thing later, then they are there. And we are not sure if they're going to be asked again, but just in case, we make a, a memo so that we can then look them up. So R00 with the intermediate results in 0 to me. How can I go from 0 to 0 with the intermediate results only in 0 and 2? Well, 2 doesn't really help because I can't even get to here from 0. Uh, if I stay within 0 and 2. So the only way is uh, to go from 0 to 0 is basically keep on circling on here. And so this is what gives me this A star. This is R0, 0, with intermediate states in uh, 0, 2. R0, 1, 0, 1, with intermediate states in 0, 2. So I want to go from here to here with intermediate states in here. So from here to here, looks like I can loop in here and go here. And if the intermediate states are in here, well, uh, I can't really make much use of that because I can only get to ha after having visited one. And so A star B it is for this one. Now this, of course, is cheating because I'm convincing myself that I can see this uh, the right way. If I were to apply the theorem properly, then at this stage, uh, in order to compute uh, this uh, R1102, I would have to expand it to something else. To what? R11 uh, of, for example, just 0 if I exclude the 2, or I could have excluded the 2 and kept the 0. Or um, I've excluded the 2, so I need to go to it, R1, 2, 0, R2, 2, 0, star, and R2, 1, 0. And each one of them I'd have to do for itself. And each one of these, in turn, if I can't see it by I, I might have to do it by removing the zero and going directly, blah, 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 blah. And so you can see how this uh, might take all morning. But anyway, um, let's uh, cut this short. And if you uh, follow the things that we have been doing and you expand the things that we haven't quite expanded uh, for the sake of time, then you get to actual expressions you can combine. And at a point like this one, you can see that the empty string repeated arbitrarily many times can actually be removed because it doesn't make any difference. So this is just a, uh, a star b, and these brackets can go. So this is a, a star b. And um, a, a star b alternated the empty string. Can I drop the empty string? No, because a, a star b contains at least an a. And so the empty string gives me something different, which is not having even that a. And so this is equivalent to this. And um, Actually, this is one of the few instances where I'm catching out my esteemed colleague, uh, Professor Pitts, because I suspect that for a true pedant, you should write this epsilon in the other way. You should write this style of epsilon instead of this style of epsilon, because he said sometime earlier that this was the empty string and this was the regular expression that match the empty string. And here I'm talking about the regular expression. So there you go. So substitute those three shaped epsilons for these uh, in-shaped in epsilons uh, whenever they occur inside a regular expression. So um, yeah, this simplifies not very much to this one. Uh, and this other one is either the regular expression matching nothing or this, and so that one I can actually drop because uh, if it matches nothing, I'm never going to that branch. 
and this one I drop, and A brackets A, A, A star. It means I have to have at least two A's, and then as many other A's as I like, so I have to keep that. And then I combine all these things together, and I get this. And it may or may not be possible to simplify this, and if you do it through eliminating some other state first, you might get something else that looks totally different, even though it will, by construction, be equivalent. Uh, and so this is to say we now have an algorithm for creating a regular expression from a uh, finite automaton, but it is not intuitive, and the regular expression that you get is not necessarily one you would come up with by inspection, and it is still a difficult problem for a human, even a human who knows this theorem, A, to build a regular expression, and uh, B, to compare to regular expression to see if they match the same machine.